Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. An old shipwreck, a known shipwreck, is suddenly turning up more gold coins off of the South Carolina coast. That's right, more gold coins. Previous coins were discovered there before, but now new ones are coming to light. This is pretty interesting indeed. Let's explore. <laughs> Yes, that's right. Several members of the community made me aware of this, and I actually saw it come through my news feed as well. Just haven't had time to do a video on it until now. But a quite fascinating story indeed. But before we go there, I want to remind my viewers that I do post videos every day. There has been some uh, people commenting and saying they're not getting notifications or not seeing my videos uh, as usual. So uh, if you ever are wondering where my videos are um the, i guess if you don't doesn't come across your subscription feed or you don't get notifications or emails about my videos just know that i post every day you can always come to the salivate metal youtube channel and see the videos there and um and so if you're ever wondering there you go because we can't rely i guess on youtube sometimes the algorithm sometimes these notifications don't go out in time so just to make my viewers aware of that but a very interesting story and thanks again to several viewers who sent me this a fascinating indeed the shipwreck 180 year old shipwreck popular with scuba divers is proven to be a trove of rare coins and artifacts for a salvage project launched 20 miles off the South Carolina coast. It's known to divers as the Copper Pot, but the wreck is actually the steamship North Carolina, which collided with another boat um, in 1840 with hundreds of gold coins stuffed in passenger steamer trunks. The first of the newly found coins, several $5 pieces, gold pieces dating from the mid-1830s, were brought up in late September along with 19th century dinnerware and marble according to Blue Water Ventures International, which is based in Florida. I can't believe what we're finding, Keith Webb, president of Blue Water Ventures, told McClatchy News Group. The coins look almost as if they were minted, uh, just minted and is blowing our minds. It's because they were hidden by a large uh, piece of copper and were not moved around and the sand by the current. Uh, Blue Water Ventures and its partner Endurance Exploration Group issued a report that contends the aggregate loss in money was large. When the ship went down, they would today be valued in the tens of millions of dollars, mostly in gold coins. This includes one passenger who claimed he lost $15,000 in the incident. Imagine that, tens of millions of dollars just disappearing um, into the ocean. But you know it's gold, and you know that gold does not just disappear. In fact, even if it was uh, dissolved by aqua regia, it could still be reconstituted. And look at these coins, amazing indeed. Webb's research suggests these won't be the, the usual uh, gold coins found on 19th century shipwrecks. Many of them passengers were likely carrying coins from the newly commissioned U.S. Mint in Dalangnega, Dalangnega, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that, I've seen the word many a times, Georgia, which operated only 24 years. Coins from the Dalang, Dalangnega Mint are rare and coveted by collectors and historians. And as a collector, I should know how to pronounce that. The mint itself was created uh, because of the uh, gold rush, a little mini gold rush that happened in Georgia. Uh, regardless of denomination, any high-grade Dal Dalanega gold coins with a good strike is a real treasure and based on past history has been a blue-chip coin investment, according to DalanegaGold.com. Let's kind of see this. So we're talking about, you know, quite a history with this mint and what they are about. And uh, very good there. He's United States Branch Mint at Dolanega, Georgia. Although gold was found all the way from Virginia to Alabama, a particularly rich belt was discovered on Cherokee Indian land in Georgia, where what was to become Dolanega in 1828, causing a huge influx of miners. Kind of the first gold rush. First, the frontier town of Auraria sprang up around the mines. 
near nearby Dolanega from the Cherokee language meaning yellow money, edged her out as a newly formed Lumpkin County seat. Although several private coiners, including Templeton Reed and the and bachelors had attempted to alleviate the problem of converting the raw gold into a more readily accepted medium, there were considerable political pressure from university-accepted federal coinage. So a congressional appropriation of $50,000 was made for the construction and outfitting of the Dolanega Mint. Uh, the plans were copies for those drawn for Charlotte Mint by William Strickland, a noted architect of the day. The mint was to be a two-story stucco-covered brick structure, having a basement constructed of a hammer-dressed stone. The front of the T-shaped facility was to have 120 feet across and 33.5 feet deep. All the recent measures indicate the front was actually constructed to a length of 127.5 feet. The beginning of that and gets it gets uh, talks about, but it only was there for a short amount of time, 24 years. But back to this story here. Um, the SS North Carolina was previously searched for a treasure by an outfit called Marex, which salvaged $700,000 worth of coins back in the late 1990s. Marex ceased working the site in part because the coins were difficult to salvage. And there they go. And so there's a, a diver's video showing. And these need to be conserved and cleaned to some degree coins. so that we can see what the markings are on them. But we'll leave that to the professionals at NGC who are doing all of the coins. conservation work on the coins that we're finding off of uh, what I believe is the Pulaski route. I don't think there's they're, they're discovering them. Pretty cool to see that. It's, it's pretty neat. All the machinery that discovering the gold there. All right. Webb described the wreck as 65 feet down with about a 5 feet visibility and unexpected shifts in the current. It also has some sharks. Adding to the challenge, he says, is the fact that the research shows many of the artifacts settled as much as five feet into the sand and need to be dug out with special equipment. Wow, no wonder why it's tough to get. It's sinking below the bottom of the ocean there. And Dern's exploration has staked an admir admirality claim to the wreck, giving them exclusive rights to salvage the site. Divers have already done months of archaeological field work on the wreck, including magnetometer uh, surveying. Uh, along with the coins, he is hoping to find silverware and antique watches that may be preserved to the point of repair. Recovery efforts will continue, weather permitting, into November, he says. The sinking of the steamship North Carolina is one of the stranger shipwreck tales off the Carolinas of the 19th century. Went down 60 miles south of Wilmington near Murrell's, uh, Murrell's Inlet, South Carolina, early on September, uh, on July 25, 1840, after colliding with his sister ship, uh, Governor Dudley. The North Carolina shipwrecked block spots reports. The Dudley hit the North Carolina amid ships between the ladies and gentlemen's cabins, almost cutting the ship in half, the blog site says. Within 10 minutes, the North Carolina settled to her, uh, her decks and soon disappeared. All passengers and crew were hurriedly put on the Dudley, and most had no time to gather belongings in the havoc, according to a report by Blue Water Ventures. Webb's research indicates the steamer trunks might have been located in the same part of the ship as loads of mail. The ship is believed to have gone straight down in shallow water and has, large debris, has a large debris field. The wreck site has long been popular with scuba divers because of its easily accessible according to OceanFrontVac.com. Copper Pot is a 19th century side wheel steamer 200 feet in length and 19 miles offshore. The boiler shaft and hull are still intact beneath 80 feet of water. The vacation site says Blue Water com is committed to searching the site, weather permitting, for several years. So I think this thing is going to um, continue to uh, bring forth and reveal treasure, uh, but it's going to be much harder to get in my view. But fascinating indeed. These coins are just amazing and for such a rarity for a mint that is only in operation for 24 years. Post your thoughts below. Fascinating indeed. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for watching and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and finally, in the end, while you're finished with all that, might as well subscribe too.